Hello viewers, welcome to Enigma TV, whereby we are going to learn and experience together. Today we are going to have our biology form 2, lesson 10, whereby your tutor will be Mr. Gerard. We are going to cover the topic on transport in plants and animals, and the subtopic uh, internal structure of the heart. We are going to have the following lesson goal, whereby by the end of the lesson, you should be able to draw and label the internal structure of the Art. But before we get uh, deep into the internal structure of the art, we can at least first look at the, the external part of it, such that we, um, before we get into the internal, we shall be able to, um, to know more on the external uh, structure of the art. So let me just give a brief description of the external structure of the art before we get into the internal part of it. Uh, the art is a muscular organ located in the chest cavity in between the three lungs. Uh, in between the, the lungs, sorry. It pumps the blood to the whole body. A translucent membrane called pericardium encloses the heart. The pericardial membrane secretes a fluid that acts as a lubricant when the heart is working. The outer part of the membrane is covered with layer of fat that acts as a shock absorber. This membrane also helps to keep the heart in position and um, takes on overstretching of the heart. It, I, it is made up of several types of muscles called cardiac muscle that contains interconnected muscle fibers. These muscle fibers are supplied with blood through the uh, coronary artery. The coronary artery branches from the outer just be uh, beyond the semilunar fab. It forms branches wi uh, which run on the heart surface and into the heart muscle before dividing into capillaries. The capillaries join up to, uh, to form the coronary vein, which conveys uh, blood to the right atrium. That is a brief description of the external part of the heart, and now I want us to look at the internal structure of it. Whereby um, we can say that uh, the mammalian heart is composed of four chambers, whereby we are having two atria and two ventricles, as you can see from our diagram. Um, the atria, they form the upper chamber, while the ventricles form the lower chamber. Uh, the right atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the body organs except the lungs, while the right atrium receives oxygenated blood from the lungs to the pulmonary vein. I hope you are able to see um, uh, the parts as I am naming them. You will be directed by the arrows. That is, the arrows are symbolizing the flow of blood. Then the right atrium, we have said that the right atrium receives the oxygenated blood from the body organs except the lungs, while the left atrium, whereby an, an at, uh, for the atrium you can call, uh, call it uh, also the auricles. They receive oxygenated blood from the lungs through the pulmonary vein as we are seeing from our uh, diagram. The ventricles, they are composed of um, the ventricles, you can see we have both the left and the right. Uh, they are composed of um, cardiac muscles. The wall of the left ventricle is thicker than that of the right ventricle. The volume of the uh, left ventricle is smaller than that of the right ventricle. A thick muscular wall called the septum separates the left half of the heart from the right half. Uh, you guess from our diagram you are able to recognize where the septum is. Uh, a thick muscular wall called a septum separates the left half of the heart from the right half. That is so it means that the septum is in between the left half and the right half. This prevents the mixing of the oxygenated and oxygenated blood. The thicker wall of the left ventricle enables it to generate a high pressure required to take blood to the distant body tissues. Remember, we have said that the left ventricle is more thick than the, the right ventricle. And here we are giving the reason, uh, it is because the left ventricle, uh, it, uh, is it, uh, it is um, possible for it to generate high pressure required for it to take blood to the distant body tissues. The right ventricle pumps blood for a short distance to the lungs, hence that is why it is having a thin wall. Between the atria, all the auricles and the ventricles, we have uh, a, a, a trioventricular valves, which are also known as the cuspid valves, uh, and their function is to prevent um, blood from flowing back into the atria when ventricles contract. 
Uh, on the right is the tricuspid valve. As you can see from our diagram, on the right we have the tricuspid uh, valve and on the left is the bicuspid valve. These valves are supported by tendons which are attached to the wall of the ventricle on each side of the heart. The tendons prevent the arterioventricular valves from turning inside out when under pressure when ventricles contract. Remember that blood uh, in the heart is under very high pressure, so it is the work of the tendons to prevent um, the arterioventricular valves from turning inside out. At the base of the pulmonary artery and the outer are cup-like valves, which are known as the semilunar uh, valves. These valves are opened by the force of the blood generated by contraction of the ventricles. The valves prevent backflow of blood in the ventricles when the, uh, when the ventricles relax. Having uh, done and um, said that, I uh, guess now we are able to do some activity, whereby in our activity we are required to draw and label the internal structure of the, of the heart and also, um, for more information on this, you can refer to KLB Secondary Biology Students Book 1, which is the fourth edition, Nairobi Kenya Literature Bureau. Um, for this lesson and many more, you can send us an SMS um, through the number that uh, is appearing on our screen, or you subscribe to our YouTube channel, which is Elimu TV, or you send us a message on our Facebook page, which is Elimu TV, or you tweet us at Elimu TV underscore Kenya. Let us subscribe to all these channels so that we get um, um, more of these less uh, biology lessons. Thank you.